Well, it is a, in a way accidental that the, my talk is preceded by the need for doing something about fossil fuels. Uh, I'm not going to talk about such a broad issue <coughs> as all energy devices, but I'm going to restrict myself to one small thing, namely production of hydrogen by a photochemical means are doing sort of an artificial photosynthesis. Uh, could you have the presentation? We are 10 minutes late to start. <laughs> okay, there we are. Uh, I'm going to talk about water splitting of water. Of course, when you split water, you get hydrogen and oxygen. I'm not good. I'm going to spend a few minutes on oxygen, but mostly uh, talking about hydrogen. Uh, well, the, the reactions involved in splitting of water, one is an oxidation step where you get oxygen and protons, uh, and uh, the, the reduction step where the proton becomes hydrogen. The total reaction is water gives oxygen and hydrogen. And this problem of this is the free energy change is extremely positive. It is not a very favorable reaction. Particularly, the oxidation of water involves, uh, uh, is really uh, energetically not a favorable reaction. So that is why the doing this work, of course, when plants do that all the time, the leaves do that, but can we do that in the laboratory is a different question. Of course, this can be done by water splitting by light, photocatalytic, electrical, electrochemical, or photoelectrochemical, but I'll be talking today only briefly about photochemical way of doing this thing. For those who may not remember or who do not know something about photosynthesis, let me tell you what happens in photosynthesis. First of all, uh, the, uh, in we have two photosystems, photosystem two, photosystem one. The light absorbed by the chlorophyll excites an electron from photosystem two that goes up and there is a hole. That hole is very important because that hole immediately makes, pulls out an electron from what is called a water oxidation complex, WOC. It is the inorganic unit in chlorophyll and that loses an electron and the water oxidation complex now being short of an electron pulls out an electron from water and water gets oxidized gives oxygen. That is the oxygen we breathe. In fact, the leaves keep doing this all the time through the earth, through every day. But that is not easy to do in the lab. But however, that electron that gets excited eventually gets destroyed, goes through a cascade process. It is the second electron that excited by the photo, in photosystem one that is involved in the reduction process. So we have oxidation process in the photosystem two, reduction process that gives you food in photosystem one. I will not worry about food. Instead of producing food, we produce, we would like to produce hydrogen. That is our main, uh, main, main interest. Uh, with, what happens in, uh, in a simple words, in photosystem, in the photosynthesis is given here, chlorophyll, an electron gets excited, then absorbs photons, and then you see that loses an electron after excitation, gives a positively charged species, and because of that, it pulls out an electron by WOC, the water oxidation complex, which is a inorganic unit, and that in turn puts out an electron from water, gives oxygen. <laughs> and you see, the same thing I can do in the laboratory in this way. I take a ruthenium complex, gets excited, and absorption of light, and then I mean, do some means of pulling out an electron, it becomes ruthenium-3, and that pulls out an electron from the catalyst. The ingenuity that I have in, as a solid state chemist, uh, partly physics and chemistry of solids, is derived the catalyst where it gives an electron in such a way that in turn water loses an electron, gives rise to oxygen. And this, of course, has been done now. In fact, for, uh, the, uh, this is the famous structure of, by James Barber of chlorophyll. If you remember, the water oxidation complex is supposed to have this inorganic unit a cubic, cubic type of manganese calcium oxygen unit, and uh, it is uh, not charge balanced, but because it bonded to the protein. So this manganese complex is the one, one that is called the water oxidation complex. So this is very important in producing oxygen. Now, because of this, people in Princeton and some other places did structures, artificial structures, cubic structures of manganese and so on, thinking they can produce oxygen in the laboratory using such catalysts. 
But actually, when we re reading this work, we found actually what they had said was not correct. When we used their oxygen cubic o manganese oxide of various kinds, we did not get as much oxygen. So we devised a new way of doing this oxygen, finding out uh, uh, using systems like cobalt and manganese. With, I believe the importance of the EG electron, the EG is one electron in the EG orbital that is there in the intermediate between cobalt-3 or manganese-3+, plus. that would be responsible. There is some reason to believe theoretically that it is so. So we made comp compounds of the kind uh, of co like cobalt oxides and manganese oxides containing EG electron, one EG electron, and that gave fantastic amount of uh, oxygen, very, very reliable. We had a paper in PNAS on this some couple of years ago, uh, and uh, we showed this to be true with the number of cobalt oxides and so on. And the main conclusion is we can produce oxygen. I'm not going to talk much more on that. I just showed that even oxygen production by choice of suitable catalyst is possible. Well, well, it may not compete with the leaf uh, in producing oxygen all the time, but it does produce oxygen uh, reasonably well. But our main problem is not this, but production of hydrogen. And uh, uh, this water, water splitting can be done by several means. One is by semiconductors. We, we, our semiconductors absorb light, and then the, the, the main problem is after absorbing the light, you have to separate the photo-generated electron and holes, and, and then, of course, we have to carry the reaction in some sort of catalyst on the semiconductor. Uh, this is what we have to do. Uh, you can see the, how the electron gets excited. There, you know, the, that electron is involved in reducing the protons to hydrogen. We have to make sure of that. So that is what we want to do. And to do that, you need materials with a band gap that are related to the redox potential of water. It has to have a band gap more than 1.23 eV. The conduction band has to be more negative than the reduction potential of protons. And the valence band has to be more positive than the oxidation potential of water. So by doing this, you know, this is a kind of a diagram that we use. Uh, there are very few materials that are good which, are, which cross this band that I have, that, yeah, brown or yeah, that colored band uh, which goes above and also below that those materials can do both and otherwise you can only do one of the processes oxidation or reduction depending on the position of the conduction and valence bands so the zinc oxide is good cadmium sulfide is good molybdenum sulfide at the end seems to be very good well this is one piece of paper i referred to people in berkeley showed, showed some time ago that they took a nanorod of cadmium sulfide and attached a nanorod of cadmium selenide in it, excited the, 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 the uh, photo absorption, excited an electron, and the hole went to cadmium selenide, and the electron went towards the cadmium sulfide, where there were the platinum atoms, uh, the nanoparticles, where the reduction took place. This is the process they gave and gave very, very fairly good results. This was only good results using semiconductor heterostructures. What we have done in Bangalore, in a very much simpler one, using simple nanoparticles of cadmium sulfide on zinc sulfide. On that, we put platinum nanoparticles. The electron gets excited in cadmium sulfide, then goes on to the zinc sulfide, zinc oxide uh, uh, level, and then the reduction occurs in the, uh, uh, on the platinum particles. So the, the, this is a very efficient process. The main thing is, in all this, we have to get rid of the holes. Holes are involved in oxidation process. What we do, therefore, is a scavenger. We use a scavenger to get rid of the holes. The people in Berkeley used alcohol as a scavenger. We have used different inorganics and organics as scavengers. Particularly the organics are very good because they get oxidized and give useful chemicals. And so we use benzyl alcohol and produce these things. In fact, when we did this work, what we got was a fantastic result. Uh, I only show one of them, the one on the left-hand side, bottom side, you can see we have got quantum yields up to 50%, and fairly high uh, yields of, uh, 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 high yields of uh, 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 hydrogen, 30 to 40 or 50 millimoles per hour per gram of the catalyst. Uh, uh, if, if there is time, if there is possible, I'll show you how hydrogen coming out of the uh, our reaction vessel uh, at the end of my talk. And uh, uh, in fact, at this table, you may not be able to read. All I've tried to show the, the, the work we, we did a couple of years ago showed that we can get by a very simple semiconductor heterostructures, very good yields of hydrogen with high quantum yields, very com somewhat comparable to what the Berkeley people did, except that our 
semi single, some our heterostructures are much simpler to make, and we did some, some of this work. Since then, of course, we have done many other uh, types of uh, uh, studies. We have tried to modify uh, these, this kind of semiconductor structures. For example, you know, zinc oxide, you know, is a colorless material, is white substance. So it cannot absorb visible light. Can I make zinc oxide a colored material? Well, we have done that. What I show is a spectrum of zinc oxide with a large band gap. I just, do zinc oxide oxygen can be doped with nitrogen and fluorine. I can make in my laboratory zinc oxide which is yellow, brown, and red, deep red color, deep red colored zinc oxide by putting enough of nitrogen and fluorine in zinc oxide. And in fact, I can now use zinc oxide for visible excitation. By doing such things, we have been able to uh, improve this yield of uh, uh, hydrogen. Uh, I, I will not show that in nearly 50 millimoles, which is pretty and fairly, fairly good quantum yield. I am not going to details except to show this is the kind of effort that is going on in laboratories like mine, where or physical chemical laboratories, where physics and chemistry both used to solve problem of uh, 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 or the hydrogen production. Well, many other things, for example, platinum. People don't like platinum to be used, so we have got rid of platinum by replacing it with nickel oxide, which is an insulator. This is because the conduction band level of nickel oxide is just perfect at matching with the uh, levels of zinc oxide, and uh, we have been able to do some work using this. This is one strategy we have used. Another strategy we have used is what is called a disensitized production of hydrogen. This is very interesting. You see, it was known, there was a paper in, uh, some years ago in, uh, in a chemistry journal, also in science. Somebody took molybdenum sulfide, small particles, and found that they produce hydrogen by splitting water very, very easily with a reasonably high turnover numbers. Well, uh, if that is the case, I thought we should look into that. And what people have also found since then, two, three years ago, was take molybdenum sulfide and make a composite of graphene. I hope you all know the one atom thick carbon material, graphene, and we, we try to do that. What we do is take a dye like eosine, excite, uh, excite the electron, it goes to triplet state, then give the triplet state an electron by some means, by, by using the right chemical, it becomes negatively charged, that eosine the anion is very unstable, it immediately loses that electron and gives it to graphene. Graphene here is essentially a medium to use it, and eventually the reduction of protons occurs on molybdenum sulfide sheets and it gives you hydrogen. We did this work and uh, we found actually by using this graphene and molybdenum sulfide, we got very good yields, uh, reasonably good yields of hydrogen, particularly when we took graphene with NEG, when you nitrogenate graphene, take atomic layer, one atom, take graphene and put lots of nitrogen in it and it was much better. If this is the case, we put much more nitrogen, we did that, when you put a lot of nitrogen, 15% nitrogen can be put in graphene, we could raise the amount of hydrogen to nearly 10 millimoles uh, with, with ordinary sunlight uh, or with even 100 watt lamp, equivalent of 100 watt lamp. This gave us an idea, why use this, why not make a chemical modification of molybdenum sulfide itself. This is new chemistry, by the way. If you take molybdenum sulfide and put lithium atoms and then dump it in water, there is a tremendous exfoliation. Boof, a lot of hydrogen comes out. You get single sheets of molybdenum sulfide, and they are metallic. That is that met MOCS2 that comes from lithium intercalation and exfoliation is no longer the usual molybdenum sulfide, which is yet a direct band gap semiconductor. I get metallic 1T MOS2 that I prepare. I use that, you see, and I know I'll show that I've got that by electron microscopy, diffraction. You know what? The new 1T MOS2 with a new kind of coordination of molybdenum, the octahedral coordination instead of the normal MOS2, which is a uh, semiconductor with a trigonal prismatic coordination. Uh, and I've tried to show the coordination for those interested. Uh, I use this with a disensitized uh, uh, situation. And you see what we have got. We have got enormous amount of hydrogen. In fact, this 1T MOS2 uh, gave a, 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 a hydrogen yield, which are very, very large, nearly 30, 40, 35 millimoles of uh, hydrogen per gram per hour. So this kind of a, uh, uh, a situation is very interesting. So if this is the case, why MOS2, why not MOSC2, which should be better? Because my theoretical friends calculated, showed that MOSC2 in 1T form would be even superior to MOS2. When we did that, we could get 70 millimoles of hydrogen per gram per hour. 
which is in fact one of the highest yields ever found in a material, high yield of hydrogen using 1T MOS. But there are other practical problems which I'll not bother about these 1T phases, their stability and so on. Uh, main thing is anyway, we've been able to produce this, uh, these experimentally. So what we have is a high yield of hydrogen coming out of a MOSC2. This is one of, the, one of the kinds of uh, work we have done now using photochemical ways of producing hydrogen uh, by various means uh, what, uh, uh, by splitting water. Well, there are many other ways of doing this kind of experiments. Uh, in fact, uh, these are the conclusion. This, this has been published in one or two major journals, uh, the use of molybdenum sulfide and molybdenum sulfide. Serenite. In the last few weeks, we have found if you take molybdenum sulfide, somehow combining with materials like carbon, carbon nitride, C3 and 4, it is a very, very good catalyst. In fact, there was a paper in Nature where people talked about C3 and 4 as some sort of a catalyst, but uh, we found much better if you put C3 and 4 with MOS2, we get excellent yields of hydrogen, very, very large amounts of hydrogen and with high turnover numbers and high uh, quantum yields. So this is the kind of work we have done photochemically. And um, you see, the, this is the first experiment we got. You see hydrogen coming out just by uh, ordinary sunlight. Uh, it, you can see the, the material is down there. This keeps on coming for weeks together. But it, we improved on it. Unfortunately, that is what happened to that. What is the next one? Ah, there. You see, this, this, this is a, just a routine experiment, not very well done. But I can, you see, this hydrogen keeps coming after a week. It still keeps on coming, keeps on coming. Uh, this was after six, five days. My catalyst is down there, water is there, light is shining, and the hydrogen keeps coming. In fact, this is a very, very uh, excellent way. And somebody even wants to commercialize it. I don't know what, what they will do. But hydrogen keeps coming uh, uh, by this method of uh, uh, what you might call artificial photosynthesis. This is using the semiconductor heterostructure. It is not based on, uh, oh, it is not based on uh, 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 the molybdenum sulfide. What I'm trying to show you is that today, we in chemistry, with combination of physics and chemistry and material science, we can come with very nice solutions for particularly the fossil fuel problem producing hydrogen, provided you use hydrogen as a fuel. Because there are lots of other problems with hydrogen. We can make hydrogen now reasonably well, but to store hydrogen is a problem. You cannot store hydrogen in cylinders. You have to find a solid which keeps about 5 to 6 percent, according to the Department of Energy in the United States, they recommend 5 to 6 percent, 8 percent hydrogen must be there, but which can be stored in a solid and by a mild heating or something, that hydrogen comes out. We have not found that solid yet. A lot of people are publishing papers, but they're good for papers, but they're not practical yet. So I hope one of these days, somebody will find a way to store hydrogen. If that is the case, what we have done is good, because the fuel cells in white hydrogen are working very well. We have no problem with fuel cells. And as you know, there are already many cars running on hydrogen, uh, but except that they're on cylinder. Well, I, the reason I put outlook instead of showing more uh, frames there is a couple of minutes I'll take. See, what are the other things I'm doing? It is not just the photochemical. When we have other things we have to do is a thermo, solar thermochemical. Sun gives heat. That heat is enormous. Of course, if you go to Weizmann Institute in Israel, they get very high temperatures uh, using uh, sun. But we don't need that much of uh, heat. Even if, uh, there are uh, uh, thermochemical cycles which we have worked on. Uh, uh, the first paper came on this in science by somebody else. We have improved on it. At 1,000 degrees, I can reduce water into hydrogen very nicely. Uh, very, very, you can do commercial production if you like. More than that, I can take carbon dioxide by the same procedure, make it carbon monoxide. So in one step, I've got carbon monoxide, hydrogen, it is nothing but syngas, can use it to make hydrocarbons and whatever are useful organic chemicals. But in the last few weeks or couple of months, we have used a multiple thermochemical cycles, which are multi-step, unfortunately, originally proposed by a friend of mine in Caltech, which were improv improvised and improved at 700 degrees, we are able to, re able to decompose water into hydrogen by this thermochemical cycle. So by using light, sunlight, we can do it. We can also sun heat, we can do uh, uh, a production of hydrogen today. Uh, and uh, we can also, not only hydrogen, but also carbon monoxide by reducing carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide reduction is a very important thing industrially and also for, for our various reasons, Professor Molina mentioned, and this is a very, very important thing 
to get rid of carbon dioxide and ways of reducing carbon dioxide by finding processes by which it is reduced to useful chemicals or doing something else. So this is a, <coughs> this is a short, brief summary of one or two things we are doing in the laboratory uh, in the last few years, two, three years, to see how we can contribute to alternative energies which are safe, which are also useful at the same time, which avoid fossil fuels, uh, hydrogen particularly being environmentally very friendly. Thank you. Thank you very much for these insights. And we open the discussion. Yeah. Professor Phillips. Well, that was a lot of information. And um, I'm guessing that one of the reasons why you've presented us with so many different schemes for uh, the reduction of, of hydrogen is because uh, it's not yet clear which is the best. And what I'm wondering is two things. What kinds of uh, issues are still open that will need to be decided in order to settle on a good scheme? And how much better would that eventual scheme be, say, than simply growing plants and burning them? Well, as far as reduction of uh, water to hydrogen is concerned, photochemically, I think we have reached a stage which are more or less as, as final as it can be. The real problem is keeping the electron and hole separate, you know, the not allow the recombination. And I think we have succeeded in that by the right kind of heterostructures, and I think there is no longer such a problem. Uh, but that is why we got rid of that and used the disensitized thing where the, uh, the molybdenum sulfide sheets, the nano -sheet, single layers, uh, do a job and between these two methods photochemical methods are quite safe but you know what I did not mention people say why are you doing all this why don't you do but photovoltaics after all sunlight you do solar photovoltaics use electrical electrochemical uh, 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 production of hydrogen using sunlight sun uh, photovoltaics well in fact my friend uh, from Israel recently came he said he asked me that but unfortunately you can't do electrolysis electrolysis is very difficult because of the over potential problem so, so there's a lot of work now we are doing and the over potential problem, getting rid of platinum catalyst, uh, sunlight, more or less we have reached a stage which is uh, reasonable. Thermochemical is not a tested, we have only done laboratory scale. Many people have done uh, uh, photochemical also at laboratory scale. Nobody has put up, just the first plant is being put up on a photochemical hydrogen and carbon monoxide production recently. Uh, so I hope it will be successful uh, large scale production. Uh, laboratory scale is quite successful. As you know, the Berkeley people also showed that uh, hydrogen comes out quite nicely in their catalyst uh, uh, quite effectively. Uh, I, I'm, I'm quite hopeful as well production of hydrogen is concerned, uh, also production of carbon monoxide is concerned uh, by uh, both photo and thermochemical means. <laughs>